You know her from iconic roles like the Vacation series, Christmas Vacation, European Vacation, Vegas Vacation. You've seen her as Patsy Cline. You've seen her in Entourage. She has lent her voice and her talents to so many projects over the years, and it is an honor to talk to somebody the caliber of Miss Beverly D'Angelo. She joins us on the show to talk about The Good House. We talk about a lot of things, though, her creative expression, where she... Uh, what, what she likes to do as far as getting her craft to the next level, a, a one-woman show she's been working on. And, of course, we talk to her about Chevy. We talk a little bit about Entourage. We talk about the great Sigourney Weaver. And she's even cra- she even says this performance by Sigourney, Oscar-worthy. We'll see if we can turn that nomination into Academy Award winner Sigourney Weaver. All that and more this time on The Collection with Beverly D'Angelo. <laughs> And she joins me right now, and it's one of those rare treats where you get to actually talk to somebody who you've been a fan of for the entirety of your life. Uh, Beverly D'Angelo joins us this morning to talk about The Good House. Beverly, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, Brad. Thanks for asking. Hello, Houston. Yes, yes, yes. We're excited to hear your voice here on the Houston Airwaves. Um, We're talking about The Good House. This is a film that just came out last week. Sigourney Weaver, of course. Uh, yourself, Morena Bacharin, a great cast. Um, tell tell me about how, how have you felt the feedback? Because the reason I say that is Rotten Tomatoes, I don't put a whole lot of stock in, but the critics love it and audiences love it. What have you thought about the feedback so far? Well, I got to tell you something, because uh, I'm big in truth and advertising. I'm only in this movie for a very, very brief time, but I am really, really happy to be able to talk about it because that Sigourney Weaver has Mm. turned in an Oscar-caliber performance. And I got to watch how she worked and, and, uh, you know, her approach as an an actor, you know, on the set. And it was was very exciting, um, you know, to be in that uh, sandbox with all those wonderful actors, Paul Guilfoyle, Kevin Kline, David Rashi. And it's an important story. It's a, it's, it's kind of like a, it's like a coming of age story for Sigourney. It's about a um, um, a woman who has kind of I don't know how else to put it gone awry, it's dealing with alcoholism and 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 uh, a business that her real estate business is kind of going down the tubes. But she finds love by reconnecting with her uh, the, the the boy that that was too poor to marry in the first place. So it's a love story, and it's a story of of survival and change and perseverance. And I just love, I love the story. And I'm just, uh, Sigourney Weaver's performance is fantastic. You know, really I, I'm, I'm so glad that you said that because somebody of, of your caliber, I mean, you're such a great actress. Everybody knows your, your, your breadth of material that you've worked on over the years. You know, you write, you sing, you do all these things. But for me personally, I'm saying, I always like to surround myself with people whom I deem are better than I am in my chosen craft. I never want to be the smartest oh, one in the room. Isn't and, that the truth? Yeah, I never want to be I never want to be the the best. I always want to surround myself by people who I can learn from. And it sounds like Sigourney, you were kind of sitting there in the corner and, and getting some notes. Yeah, we really have that in common, Brad. We really do. I, I, that's been that's been, you know, I love to learn things. Mm. And and uh, uh that's that's been my path the whole time. I've always looked for, you know, role models and mentors and, 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 and sought to be, you know, in the company of people I deeply respect. By the way, speaking of being in company, I've been in Texas, you know. I shot, I, I shot in te- Texas a couple of times, always based in the Dallas, Dallas, Fort Worth area, though. But I love Texas, that big open sky. Yeah, no, no, nothing like a nothing like a Texas uh, evening time. T- I'm telling you, with all the stars in the sky, I won't I won't knock you for being in Dallas too much. You know, Houston's a little bit better, but it's okay, Beverly. We, we'll, we'll, we're okay with that. Okay, but um, <laughs> um, you know, you actually say though that you're always looking uh, to get better or find a mentor or what have you. Tell me if I got this wrong. I I saw somewhere, I heard somewhere that a couple of years ago, maybe you're still doing it, you went to the actor's studio to kind of sit in on classes to, to even get better and, and keep yourself sharp. Is that correct? Well, I've been a member of the actor's studio for a very long time. Um, that That's just part of, you know, part of my part of my thing. Um, my, my entrance into acting came through singing. So, 
and I, I didn't connect with it, you know, complete, I, I wasn't one of those people who like, you know, went to a bunch of acting classes as a kid or dreamed of movie stardom or anything. But I was, I was singing, started out as a singer with Ronnie Hawkins in Canada, did a Broadway show. The movies opened up to me. First movies I did were musical films, The Hair, Goldman's Daughter. But as far as uh, my love of acting, you know, I actually, the truth is when I first left home, I, I worked with Anna-Barbera Cartoon Studios. So I, I, I'm i also not someone who had like a job as a waitress as I was striving for something. I've I've had a, an artistic life, you know. I mean, my, uh, my life's really been about uh, expression and the opportunities that I've had. But I, I think everything's a, a learning curve, and I'm always looking for, for ways to, you know, uh, uh, fortify means of expression. I don't know how else to say it, you know. No, so, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I totally understand that. And, and to me, just knowing what I know about you of watching you in films for, for forever, uh, sure. it seems like you, you are a true artist. And I know that you've been working on – yeah, a one-woman show. Is this right? Are, are, how are, how's the progress on this? Are you we, know, before are we... COVID, I had fine, cause I've got so many stories, and I have such a unique story that I thought, well, I've just got to put this, you know, in writing. So I did, I did, I was ready to go on tour with a one-woman show before COVID hit, and it's a series of, um, of, uh, uh, monologues with there are a few songs in it there's some archival footage and there's some video that's kind of contextual that brings you to the place that i was as i as as i tell my story but that's kind of on hold for the moment i think i might circle back to it in 2023 right now i'm going back and forth between atlanta and my home base of los angeles shooting a really nice recurring role in a cbs series called true lies it's going to air next spring and um it's based it's kind of like a reboot well, it, the pilot is a reboot of the film that Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis made, and it's about you know it's a mild-mannered suburban couple that uh, that um, is actually involved with international espionage. And I have a great role as the boss lady of all the bosses, Trilby. That comes out in the spring, and I have a big film coming out in December. December second, Violent Night, is a really fun film. Um, starring David Harbour, John Leguizamo, me, Edie Patterson from Righteous Gemstones, Alexis Lauder, a great cast, and uh, it's a real adventure. The trailer just dropped for that, Violent Night, and that that uh, that can be found on the Internet or YouTube, anywhere you look. Okay, well, hey, I'm going to have to check that out. You know, you have all these projects you're working on. I, I heard you one time characterize the way that you sometimes select projects uh, I'm sure, obviously, the material has to speak to you, but you also said, uh, how long and how close? Is that still kind of your motto? Way, 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 way back. No, 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 no. That's, as I said, you know, when I, the the, the film business kind of, you know, uh, asked me to come in. I wasn't looking for it. I was thinking I was going to be a singer, but so, um, uh, and I had this tremendous kind of start many years ago, but I had twins when I was 49 years old, and by the time I was 54, um, uh, I I really had to step back from working at all because their father was working all the time. And I, I mentioned I was from Ohio, and uh, uh, you know the the way I knew how to raise kids was to be it was just I wanted to make sure there was one parent available to my kids, you know emotionally and physically at all times, whether it was me or their dad. And their dad was working a great deal, and it was really kind of a no-brainer for me to step back a bit. So during those years when I was raising my kids, um, I, uh, you know, oh, I did Entourage for seven years, and I did And you were awesome TV, on but I did things that, that were close and, and wouldn't take me away from kids. So I, I certainly stepped out of mainstream movies you know, for a long time, but, uh, they're grown now and, um, and, and my engine's on. And so I am doing a lot of stuff these days. I love that. By the way, in Entourage, you're, you're, uh, you're Barbara Miller, of course, the character Barbara Miller, you're fantastic in that, that dialogue, the way that you that delivered was it was so role. sharp. It was so good. Um, um, you know, I, I, only, I only have about a minute left with you, so I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, uh, and I, I'm sure you, you talk about it all the time, but we are getting close to the Christmas season. Uh, Christmas Vacation is one of my favorite movies of all time. I've had Jeremiah Chechik, the director, on before. We've talked in length about it, but I just, 
found out that you did something on the set that, that made it into the movie that I've never seen before. You said that there was like a a one shot that y'all had and you snuck something in there. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, it was a vacation. That's right. We were at the end of the day and and everybody was rushed. And I said to Chevy, hey, listen, I think, I, you know, can I do this? Because I'll bet they, they won't even notice it with all these people in the shot. And uh, let's just see if it if it gets it. And he went, yeah, go ahead. So we did that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. And, you know, say again. Christmas and speaking heavy, I am going to be at Steel City Con, um, uh, the autograph convention, uh, December 9th, 10th, and 11th in Monroeville, Pittsburgh, just at a side of Pittsburgh. Chevy and I are going to do a nice appearance and signing there in December. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Everybody needs to get out. Vacation. Everybody needs to get out to that Christmas vacation. It's held up so well, it, and and so have you. And everything that you've done, the Good House it's, it's is. It's it, like it's part of everybody's Christmas. It's a part. It's a literally a part of the American fabric at this point. Like you have, it's, it's a must watch. I know it's fantastic. It's incredible, and che- like- and Chevy's still to me one of the greatest comedic actors of all time. Whether it be physical oh. or the way he delivers dialogue, he's second to none. Oh yeah. I know he's really, he really claimed his space, didn't he? Uh, in, in, incredible, incredible! But the movie is called The Good House. Sigourney Weaver, of course, Beverly D'Angelo is involved. Check out all the projects she mentioned during this interview, Beverly. Uh, next time you're in Houston, give me a shout so I can show you what what real Texas is about. Not like that Dallas place, but we don't hold it against you. We won't hold it against you. <laughs> Have a great one.